If we look at uh, the monthly forecast from the IEA, at least from the beginning of the year until today, so three months oil market reports, we can see how they have been changing their numbers. They are becoming more bullish on the oil demand, so gradually increasing their forecast for this year. But most importantly, it is their outlook about the market. So only last month they were saying that the market would remain comfortable until the end of the year. Now they are talking about the market possibly being in a deficit, though they do recognize it's a marginal deficit, so not much uh, happening in terms of being too mm. worried about uh, prices, price rises. However, their main assumption is that OPEC Plus will maintain its cuts, which have been extended for the half of this year, for the first half, till the end of the year. So there is a big if there and whether OPEC, first of all, is going to extend its cuts and whether its members are going to maintain their discipline because we're already seeing the laggards, the usual suspects such as Iraq, not delivering on their promises. The usual suspects. Well, let's push you a bit more on that then, because that is the crucial element, it seems, within, it, within this forecast, is, is that assumption around, around the extension of cuts. And you're pointing to the, the divisions within, within OPEC+. Plus. Iraq is one of them. Arguably, uh, the UAE could be uh, as well. What is your expectation as to whether or not the group can hold the line then through the rest of this year? Well, I think because of all the diversions that we have seen over the last few years, I think they are not doing a bad job at all, especially if you take into consideration the reputational damage that the departure of Angola caused in December. So they were able to overcome that thing. And the UAE, the UAE got a sweet deal from OPEC Plus and the previous discontent within the organization because they saw their production baseline increasing. And from a higher baseline, they applied their quota. So in a sense, they are getting away with more production without breaking any quota. Iraq, it has, for a long time, they struggled to, to deliver on their promises. But what matters is the big players, Saudi Arabia and Russia, as well as other members such as the UAE. But I would say it's Saudi Arabia and Russia that is holding the whole group together in OPEC+. Plus. So I'm not too worried about their solidarity. I'm more concerned about their discipline. But hopefully that will not be an issue for the group, given what they went through already.